Hello everyone, welcome to Botany Optional Channel for UPSC Examination. In today's lecture, we are going to see the very important topic in paper 1 called lichens. A very important topic and often a question asked by the UPSC in their main examination on the same topic. So let's get started. So if you see at the syllabus, we have chapter number 2 called cryptograms. In these cryptograms, they have included the topic lichens for our studies. So that is why we are covering this topic. It is a very important topic in our chapter number 2 called cryptograms. So first of all friends, what about the general characteristics of the lichens? Lichens are very slow growing and long living organisms. These are lichens often have very slow growth and uh, they live for a very longer period of time. They can be found wide variety of the habitat. They have wide variety of habitat. They can be found from Antarctica to the Arctic. They are present everywhere, literally. That's why they have a very wide range of habitat. The word lichen was first used by the Theophrastus in 300 BC. This lichen word is first time used by the Theophrastus in 300 BC. These lichens are formed by the close association between algae and fungi. That is, the lichens are not the close lichens are the organism which have close association between algae and fungi. That is, they are the combination of two different partners. One of them is algae, and second is fungi. That means lichens are literally the combination of algae and fungi. The partner which is which belongs to the algal group is often called as phycobiont while the partner which belongs to the fungi is called mycobiont. You should remember these terms as they are very important. The algal partner in the lichen is called phycobiont while the fungal partner in the lichen is called mycobiont. So these both the partner come together to form the lichen as an organism all right these algal partners are generally the member of chlorophyce while the fungal member is often belonging to the ascomycetes or deuteromycetes all right so these are algal partner may belong to the chlorophyce while the fungal may be belong to the ascomycetes or deuteromycetes and the algal partner is called phycobiont, while fungal partner is also called as mycobiont. So the combination of these two form together they form the lichens. Now why they are combining with together and what the evolutionary significance they have with together. Now if you can see algae is typically have aquatic habitat while fungus is generally a terrestrial in nature. That means fungus have the ability to live on the land while the algae generally live in aquatic conditions. But lichens have, as we have discussed earlier, that they can be found from Antarctica to the Arctic and live in a very extreme conditions. Now, from this, we have general idea that the combination of algae and fungi, that is the lichen, may have symbiotic association. Symbiotic is literally means in which both the partners get benefited. In the combination of algae and fungi in the lichen, algae on one hand prepare the food in the process of photosynthesis, while fungi has the ability to hold the water which is essential for the process of photosynthesis. While algae not live on the terrestrial land or the dry land, but with the combination of fungi, algae gets the water because fungus has the ability to hold the water for a very longer period of time. That is why fungal partner gives water to the algae and algae by using this water and sunlight prepares the food in the process of photosynthesis and now this food is directly used by the fungi. So algal partners give food to the fungal partners while fungal partner give water to the algal partner. That is why this association is, association is a symbiotic type of association in which both the partners get benefited. So that is why there is the evolutionary significance in the combination of algae and fungi in which they form the organisms called 
lichens. This combination of algae and fungi can grow on tree trunk, well, rocks, even on soil or on decomposed matter. The combination of algae and fungi gives them the ability to grow on wide range of the habitats like tree trunk, rocks, soil or on a decomposed matter. So in a general characteristic you have to remember about the lichens are the they are very slow growing plus they also very long living organisms. Their habitat is ranges from Antarctica to the Arctic. The word lichen first time used by the Theophrastus in a 300 BC. Lichens are nothing but the combination of algal and fungal partners. Algal partners is called phycobian, while the fungal partner is called mycobian. Algal partner may belong to the chlorophyce, while fungal partner may belong to the ascomycetes or deuteromycetes or any other group of the fungi. Now, the very basic element of the combination of algae and fungi in lichen is that they have a very symbiotic type of association in which algae prepares food and given to the fungi, while fungi provide water to the algae. So it is a symbiotic type of association. By this association, they can, the, the lichens can be distributed from ranges of the habitat, that is from tree trunk to the rocks, on the soil or on the decomposed matter. So what are the types of the lichens? Now, there are various types of the lichen. They can be classified in a various ways on the basis of fungal partner lichens can be are of three types first is second is basidio lichen and third one is deutero lichens these are very simple to understand because if fungal partner belong to if the fungal partner belonging to the ascomycetes group, then the lichen is called ascolichen. In the same way, if the fungal partner belongs to basidiomycetes, it's called basidiolichens. And if the fungal partner belonging to the deuteromycetes, then such a lichen is called deuterolichen. All right. So these are very simple to understand. On the basis of the fungal partner, there are three types of lichen. First is the ascolichen, second is the basidiolichen, and third is the deuterolichen. If the fungal partner in a lichen belongs to the ascomycetes, then it is called ascolichen. And if the fungal partner belonging to the basidiomycetes, it's called basidiolichen. And if the fungal partner belonging to the deuteromycetes, it belongs to the deuterolichens. All right. Now there is another classification or uh, types on the basis of the structure. Lichens can be Srustose lichen or folios lichen or fruticose lichens. So on the basis of this structure or thallus, the lichens are of three types. First is the srustose lichens, second is the folios lichens, and third is the fruticose lichens. The srustose lichens are thin and Flat lichens, srustose lichens are thin, thin and flat in structure. And the example for the srustose lichens is a hematoma. The folios lichens are leaf-like structure having lichens. That is why they are called as folios lichens. And the example for the folios lichens is the permelia. And fruticose lichens, also called as shrubby lichens, because these lichens possess the branching and the example for the fruticose lichens are usnea so if you think about the different types of the lichens on the basis of fungal partners first of all we have classified lichens under three headings called ascolichens basidiolichens and deuterolichens depending upon the fungal partner then on the basis of structure or thallus the lichens may be srustose lichen Polycose lichen or fruticose lichen. Srustose lichens are thin and flat lichens. Example is a hematoma. While folios lichens are the leaf-like lichens. That is why they are called the folios lichens. 
and the example is the permelia. Now and then there is a fruticose lichens which are shrub like lichens because they possess the branching and the example for the fruticose lichen is the usnea. You should remember the types as well as the example for the each type because if you have asked in the UPSC examination that what are the types or what are, or what are the different shape and structures found in the lichens you should uh, able to mention these different types of lichens plus their examples all right let's move forward now what are the economic and ecological importance of the lichens now this is the very important because individually question can be asked in the UPSC examination that economy write a short note on economic importance of the lichen or what is the ecological importance of the lichen both these terms e economic plus ecological have different meaning economic means from human point of view and ecological means from the nature point of view you have to put forward the points all right so in the economic importance first of all we will see the economic importance all right in very first lichens can be used as a food because many lichens are the sources of carbohydrates plus they can be used in the preparation of chocolates that is why they can be used as a food the second economic importance is the lichens can be used as a fodder lichens can be used for as a fodder for the reindeers and cattle the next economic importance for the lichen is their medicinal properties there are some medicinal uh, lichens like usnic acid is obtained from usnia we have seen the usnia as a type of the fruticose lichens right this usnia gives out the compound called usnic acid which is medicinally important and used as an anti biotic so this usnic acid used as antibiotic is obtained from the usnia that is why lichens also has a importance in the medical industry as well then there is a fourth application called industrial application in industrial application lichens can be used for the production of alcohols tannins and dyes by using lichens one can produce the alcohols tannins or dyes of different color now these are the four economic importance of the lichens in which we have seen the lichen as a food lichen as a fodder then lichen in the medi medicinal lichens those lichens which has a medicinal properties then lichens used in the industrial purposes now what is the ecological importance of lichens let's see the first of all lichens are the pioneers of vegetation on rocks in the previous videos we have discussed about the ecological succession in an ecological succession when there is a no life on the rocks or there is a bare rocks without the life the lichens are the pioneers on these rocks where there is a no life present and the these lichens are the first to settle down on these rocks which are followed by the succession process which convert that rock into the whole new forest area so these are the pioneers in the ecological succession process this is the first and very important ecological importance of the lichen now the second importance is they do the very important function of pedogenesis pedogenesis is the process in which soil is formed formation of soil is called as pedogenesis now formation of soil by the lichens lichens do the very important function of formation of soil on the rocks and once the soil is formed other small plants can come there and after forming the followed by the big plants and that is how they convert bare rocks into the forest area and uh, the you have to remember this process very important process called pedogenesis this pedogenesis is the formation of soil this pro this process is carried out by these lichens so there are two ecological importance for the lichens first is they are the pioneer in the vegetation on the rocks and second they helps in the formation of soil that is the pedogenesis all right
So in this lecture, we have seen the general characteristic of the lichens. Then we have seen the types of lichens. And at the end, we have seen the economic and the ecological importance of the lichens. All right. Uh, I hope that you get the, some knowledge through this uh, video lecture. And uh, if you like this lecture, please like the video. Plus, if you have any doubt or any question relating with this channel or content of this channel or the content of, of this video only, you can comment and straight away ask the question and subscribe to the Botany Optional channel for the UPSC examination. So, we can uh, directly send you the notification of the video. And do not, uh, please do not. Uh, forget to click on that bell icon because without clicking on that bell icon you will not get notified all right we will meet in the next video which again based on the upc syllabus all right thank you very much for watching this video see you soon